Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and in this video we'll talk about Web 3.0. From last few days, you know, most of us are talking about Web 3.0 and then maybe it is because of Metaverse or I'm not sure, but the word is trending, right? Now it is not new actually, it's there from a long time. Uh, in fact, I have talked about Web 3.0 earlier, but not with this word. Maybe we have talked about blockchain, we have talked about NFTs, but let's talk about this word. What is Web 3.0? Now, in simple terms, okay, not exactly simple terms, but if you try to do, go in technical terms, Web 3.0 is actually a web or the web service which you are using, but instead of using it on the central servers, we'll be using the web on the decentralized internet using blockchain technology. Okay, doesn't matter. Let's go for the simple terms here. See, what happens is if you talk about the web in general, it went into three phases. The first one was web 1.0, then we got web 2.0 and now we have web 3.0. Okay, so let's talk about web 1.0. Now, internet actually evol started evolving maybe around 1980s because it all started in 1960, but it took some time, right, for the public to use it. Now, in 1990, in fact, early 1990s, mostly around 1993, Internet got famous because of several reasons, but one of it was businesses started using internet in, on a high level. Because see, if a business want to promote their business, they were having multiple options, right? Before internet was getting famous, the first one was radio, magazines, newspaper, right? So they were having so many options. But now when they thought, hey, we can use this internet service where you can make a website and people from all over the world can see the data or can see what your businesses are doing, right? So as a programmer, I can make a website for a company and then I have a power. I can showcase whatever I want to the world as a programmer, right? Of course, I have to take the requirement from the businesses. Or maybe if I'm the individual programmer, I can build a website and I can write content, right? So whatever content you can see on the internet from year 1994 to 2004, most of the websites were one way where as a content creator, as a programmer, I make a website and as a normal user, if I'm the normal user, I can just read data. That's it. It's only read, right? So for the programmers, it's only write. So web 1.0 was you can only read, right? You can't write. But then we got web 2.0. Now this is where the era started in 2004. In fact, before that as well, we were having different services, but then 2004 was a bank benchmark, maybe because of Facebook. And after that, we got so many services, right? We got Facebook, we got YouTube, Instagram, WhatsApp. There are so many services, right? Here, this is Web 2.0, where as a normal user, you're not just reading content, you're also writing content. So you're doing both, write and read. Right. So example, oh, not right. Right. So example, let's say if you use Facebook, most of the content on Facebook is actually developed by normal people, right? Normal users. We push content. YouTube, we push content. Instagram, we push content. So this company, they only provide you a platform, most of it for free. And then you as a user can post your content and we enjoy it, right? Maybe some people do it for likes. Some people do it to broadcast themselves. Some people do it to earn right? Example, YouTube, kind of, you can you can earn from it. In fact, most of the platform as a content creator, you can earn. But then some people do it for likes, some people do it to showcase their skills, right? Now, the problem is, when you say most of these platforms are actually free, that's where the problem starts, right? In this world, nothing is free. So if Facebook says you are using this website for free, you are connecting with your friends, you are exploring the world, their information, on Wikipedia, okay, Wikipedia is free. Let's just, let's let's keep that aside. Talk about YouTube. Talk about Google services. They are free, yes, but they are using your data. So if you are not paying for a service, you are a product, right? A famous quote. The thing is, they are using your data to earn money. Maybe you will say nothing wrong with that, right? It's okay. They are giving us free service, so it's okay if they use our data. But the problem is you are not sure how they are using your data. See, even I am okay to allow these companies to use my data for advertisements. But I should know where exactly my data is going. Unfortunately, we don't have a control on our own data. Right? This company decides what to do with our data. So basically, yes, we have a power to write content, but we don't have a power to own our content. 
And this is a problem from a long time. So basically we want a solution where as a normal user, I should be able to own my data. I should decide if a company want to share my data, they should take my permission, right? If they want to share data, maybe they should also share profit with me, right? Because if they are using my data. Now, this is where we got web 3.0. Now here, of course, we will be having services like web services like Facebook, Google, YouTube, not exactly with those names, the services, right? Where you can connect with your friends, where you can upload videos, where you can search. Now, all these services, instead of running on the central server, which is currently happening, the centralized servers, we are moving towards a decentralized internet where you don't have a client server architecture. So basically you don't have clients like us and then servers, Facebook servers. What we have is peer to peer network where multiple nodes, like example, I'm connecting with you. So I'm one peer, you are one peer, then we have some other peer, something like torrent service. If you don't know about torrent service, just go to Google and search for, okay, again, we are using central servers, but uh, go to Google and search for how torrent works. We'll understand how this peer to peer network works, right? In fact, you can watch some of the basic videos of blockchain on this channel. So basically we'll be having all these nodes and they can interact. And the application which we build will be running on these nodes, no central servers, the decentralized internet. And normally we call those applications as dApps, the decentralized applications, which is running on decentralized network. Now this is actually powered by blockchain because the underlying technology is blockchain. So if you understand how blockchain works, this will make much more sense, right? But we are moving from web 2.0 to web 3.0 and most of the companies are actually helping it, right? It's not like they want to move to web 3.0, but they don't have a choice. If they don't move, I mean, there will not be any user who will be using their services in future, right? So they have to. So we are moving towards web 3.0. It will take some time. It's not like tomorrow you will, uh, when you get up, you will use all the services on web 3.0. It will take some time for big companies to move and then Subsequently, you will see all the small services as well moving to Web 3.0. Now, the advantage you will be having as a user on Web 3.0 is you will own your data, right? And at, at least you will know what is happening with your data. You can give the permission. And it's not just one advantage, cryptocurrencies, right? So it is actually running on blockchain already in 3.0. Right. So most of the services are moving. Example, cryptocurrencies on work on Web 3.0. NFTs are getting famous. Again, the same thing. And in future, most of the services will be on Web 3.0. So again, just to reiterate, initially we had Web 1.0 from 94 to 2004. Then 2004 to 2022, I can say Web 2.0, but then we started that till, right? So from next year, you will see a lot of services on web 3.0 so i hope you got some sense of web, what is web 3.0 and if you want some more videos let me in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos bye bye